I'm with Grifos Pens of Italy. All of our pens are manufactured in our artisan workshop in Settimo Torinese in the province of Turin, Italy. They're all made of solid sterling silver and then hand engraved with a guilloche engraver. We pride ourselves in our engraving work. This is all done manually on an engraver that belonged to the Parker Pen Company in the 1930s. You'll notice that the entire pen is made of silver, the grip section included, and this particular twist pattern is based on the divine proportion. We do traditional and modern engraving patterns. This one is inspired by a cityscape. It's a geometric pattern. Solid silver on the pen, then 18 karat rose gold plating. We also do work in traditional Italian acrylics. As you can see, we try to make our acrylics uh, eye-catching and a little unique. We work with natural materials as well, always sustainably harvested. So when it's wood, it comes from downed trees. So we work in traditional uh, Italian woods. This is olive wood that um, is sourced from Sicily. And again, the pen is solid sterling with the showing off the engraving. In woods, we also use briar root, which comes from Calabria, walnut, which traditional walnut, it's European. This is bog oak, which unfortunately our source on this is uncertain in the future because our suppliers in the Ukraine. Bog uh, oak comes from peat bogs, ancient forests. And so the oak, uh, the longer it's been exposed to the moisture, humidity, the acidity and the heat of the bog, the darker it becomes. It's on its way to becoming petrified. We work with a carbon dating lab. This piece of wood is 6,000 years old. The silver in this case has a, a chisel pattern and then it's plated with 18 karat ruthenium. We try to do some interesting engraving work. So this barrel is, has an underlay of Italian acrylic and then the engraving itself is a cardinal sitting on a branch with the cutaway to, to reveal the body, the head and the beak. And then the cap is done in the same material um, that's in the underlay to reflect the plumage of a cardinal. We do work with hand painted. So this floral is uh, done by one of our artists in the studio. Also inspired by nature. This one was inspired by uh, honeybees. And so there's a structural aluminum honeycomb laid into the acrylic that's then turned on a lathe and it reveals on the, on the 90 degrees this sort of jewel effect. And then the engraving on this one was based on the honeycomb with a almost holographic effect to give it sort of the three dimensions of it. And again, the section matches that. And then in our more unusual materials, we work with a tannery that only uh, utilizes skins that were byproducts of food production. And so um, we use leather on our pens. So we have stingray, which are farm raised in Thailand for food. Stingray is a wonderful material for a pen. It's very tough, but if you remove the outer layer and polish it, it reveals the calcium deposits in the pores of the skin, which end up looking like pearls. This is wolffish, which is, um, comes from, it's part of the Icelandic staple diet. It's an ancient fish that lives in the deep sea off Iceland, and we utilize it on pens, uh, as well as salmon. The same tannery in Iceland works with a fish farming outfit, and uh, the salmon is farm-raised. It's soft to the touch, but it's tough. They actually use it to make moccasins in Iceland. And so uh, we're the only company utilizing it on pens. In this case, the engraving pattern is designed to call to mind fish scales. And so the whole pen, again, solid sterling, combined with the salmon in which we've inlaid silver. So the skin has been impregnated with silver to capture the color. And so we do those in multiple colors. Finally, um, we try to do a lot of custom work. And so this pen started with remnants of our olive wood from the olive pens, which we laid in our forms. And then we mixed uh, resin that we put silver uh, dust that's left over from the engraving process. Then staring at it, we said, you know, it looks like landforms in the ocean. So our company is inspired often by ancient history. And so we took medieval maps of the world as it was known during the Middle Ages. We have Aeolus, the god of the wind, blowing winds across the seas and a ship sailing past the continents as they were known, completes with an anchor below the clip. 
and then the grip section has the rose compass on it and the engravings designed to uh, call to mind waves. And so we do, this is a limited series and we do, uh, we try to do this kind of level of detail work. So, Grifos Pens of Italy. Well, hi, I'm Jeannie from Jeannie's Ohana Designs. I represent also Roses Without Thorns. So Roses Without Thorns is Link Tong's company where he does the pop-up cards and they are works of art. So here's the peacock. And so you always find a nice surprise in them. He has a lot of different themes, birds, flowers, holiday, um, horses, airplanes, bicycles. And then I also make stationary sets. So my sets, some of them include his cards. So for example, this is my photography set in which I do all the photography. And then I include one of his cards as part of the set with an insert. My sets include the cards, but also postage and a cup of tea. So you get a little tea bag. In this case, it's the August Wilson stamps. So the ones without his cards are things like this. I've traveled quite a bit, so I have Paris, I have Italy, I do a lot of flowers. So I hand make all the folders, and then I also try to combine the clip to look like the flowers and the postage. I also do stationary sets with a twist. So the Pelican Twist Pen has a fun name. And so what I do is I create a set that will correspond with one of the colors. I have a little pen clip and then you can open it for the surprise. So now you have a twist and of course some tea. So you can find me on Instagram under Jeannie's Ohana Designs and Link has his website, but I often link to him. So roseswithoutthorns.net. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm Tom Bailey of The Pen Man, and we are dealers for Pelican, Platinum, Tasha, and Noodlers, and deal a lot on vintage pens also. So our website is thepenman.net. Hi, I'm John from Hello Tello Studios here at the Orlando Pen Show. Excited to see all these people that have come out to kind of support each and every one of us. So here is kind of what I brought. We have a lot of new things, really interesting things, but what makes us a little bit different is that we like to inlay different precious stones and especially Venetian glass up at the top of our pens. And so that makes us a little bit different. So each design, is very specific to the material and the design that we decide to use um, for the Venetian glass really complements the pens really well. So we're excited to be here and excited to have you guys come and check us out. Hello, I'm Terry Mayhorter from Ohio and also North Carolina. I promote two fountain pen shows, one in Ohio, which is scheduled for November the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th of this year, we're just a few months away. And I also organize a pen show in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is held usually the first or second weekend in June. I'm very pleased to be here at the very first Orlando Pen Show. Mr. Cortner, who's organizing the show, has done an excellent job, and uh, we're very appreciative of his support. Now, as far as my own personal sales, I specialize in vintage, vintage fountain pens, and also modern fountain pens, and I also deal in cufflinks and some limited amounts of jewelry. I have one very special pen which I'd like to bring everyone's attention to, and it's made by a company which I'm not sure is still in business, but it's called, the company name was Lomanche, and the gentleman that organized the company was a graduate of the Columbus School of Art and Design, and somewhere along the line he got into designing and making fountain pens. Uh, this is one example of of an unusual pen. The retail value on this pen is about $6,000. It has a carved white jade clip and the name of the pattern on the pen is Snow. 
and this particular one is one of only 20 that he made. He made some other very limited edition fountain pens, including one that was made completely from jade, carved jade in green, and that particular pen has traded uh, in the open marketplace for in excess of $200,000. This particular one, as I said, is a retail value of six, and I'm offering it for 3500 So if someone is interested, I'd be happy to explain more to them. And I appreciate the thought and the consideration, and we hope you make it to the show this weekend, sometime today between now and 6, and again tomorrow between now and 6. Hey, I'm Joe Little from uh, Little Pen Designs from uh, North Carolina, here at the uh, Orlando Pen Show, the inaugural Orlando Pen Show. Um, have a lot of, a lot of people coming in and out seeing uh, stuff, so I'd like to uh, show you a few of the items that I have. Um, this is the real popular pen that I've had, Candy Nugget is what it's called, and I actually have three different color designs with it. Uh, it's an acrylic uh, with actually crushed acrylic that's in the resin, and uh, it's been really popular. Um, most all of the pens that I have um, are either uh, mixes that I've made or their uh, mixes from other vendors, uh, other blank makers like Jonathan Brooks. Um, and I have basically about four different models, all different shapes, flat shape, tapered shape. I uh, usually use Yowo 6 in all of my pens, but I also do Bach. Um, so check me out on, the, uh, on my website, littlependesigns.net, uh, and also on my Etsy shop. I'm Brenda with the Dormouse's Desk. Um, most people probably know me from my YouTube channel, The Dormouse's Desk, where I do uh, stationary videos and um, 30 inks, 30 days um, videos. So today I have a variety of postcards that are fountain pen friendly. And on the back there's a QR code where it takes you directly to the video where I painted that. I also have ink vial labels. So this has been soaking in water, and you can see is remarkably still legible, uh, even with pencil. And the nice thing about these is that they're easily repositionable. They peel off without leaving a sticky residue. And so that's what I have today. My name is Scott Pauley, and I'm with the Inky Nib. I am an avid fountain pen collector and restoration and repair person. My passion really is to design fountain pen repair tools, one of which is this new item that we have created called the Parker Vacuumatic. What this tool does is it will remove the filling unit out of a Parker Vacuumatic when the diaphragm goes bad inside the pen body. The way it works, you get two collets with the uh, tool. One is for the standard, the debutantes, and the Parker 51. The other size is for your oversize and maxima. The collet of the right size goes onto the threads of the filling unit. You insert that into the hand piece, tighten the thumb screw, Now this is assuming you've already heated it and soaked it, but at that point then you can remove the filling unit very easily. Once it comes out, then you can release it, take the pen out, and you're ready to do your cleanup and everything else. If you're lucky enough and the diaphragm comes out at one time, you can just leave it in the tool, do all your cleanup, new diaphragm, put it back into your pen, and you're off to the races. Um, I also make the pellet pushers, which are this style with the knurled grip section. This is the deluxe, it has two different style ends on it, also for the Parker Vacuumatic, as well as the standard style here. I do also uh, make this style vac block. Uh, this is a good tool, but the problem is it can deform 
the filling unit on the plastic filling units of Parker Vacumatics. This tool does not have that tendency because of the three jaws to it. There's no opposing force on the sides. Hi, I'm Darrell. I'm Adolphus with Darrell Pens. We uh, make fountain pens. Um, I've been turning for over 20 years. And we have a website, DarrellPens.com. And you can uh, reach us there. We have uh, new styles of pens that I would like for you to, to know about. We're going to be doing a lot of vintage um, style material blanks and we're going to be doing old school with new school, meaning that we're going to take the vintage material and make it into a new style. And that's the new thing that's coming up for this year. And we'd like to thank you for all that you've done. I'm Brian Holzer. I'm with Kenro Industries and Estabrook Pens. Uh, I've been with Kenro. Kenro is actually the parent company for Estabrook and also the distributor for Monte Grappa, Aurora, Autohut, and Y Studio. Today, I'll be presenting a little bit of the Estabrook brand. Uh, Estabrook is a, an old American pen brand that we acquired in 2018. Uh, since then, we've taken the brand forward. Uh, always kind of looking back on its history because Estabrook does have a rich history in the United States, signing some important agreements like uh, JFK signing the mission to the moon and uh, the Civil Rights Act was actually signed with an Estabrook. So we wanted to keep some of those stories uh, connected with the brand because it does have this uh, rich history in the US. But as we speak in more uh, current, current form, uh, we introduced the first collection, which is our SD. Uh, SD is a nickname for uh, Estabrook pens, so when people speak about the old vintage pens, they use the term SD. And so uh, we thought it was an appropriate name to title our first pen. So SD comes in some wonderful colors. You see the sea glass and nouveau blue, sunflower, honeycomb. And we give them names and stories associated with each product and we do a lot of storytelling. Um, the pens are really fantastic. The, it was important to us that the pens, well, that's not gonna be helpful. It was important that the, the pen actually wrote. So with the SD, we decided to add the Yovo nib, which is a, a German made nib, and it's available in all the different nib sizes. And you can see we have testers out for people to enjoy with the different point sizes on them, extra fine, medium, broad, 1.1. Um, and so, so we have all those sizes, and we recently, introduced a pretty exciting nib, which is, which is our first flex nib. So the flex nib is available on the steel trim pens, and you can see it here on the honeycomb. I mean, it really, well, unfortunately this one's not loaded, but the, it offers a nice variation in the line. So we offered an extra fine and fine but it really stretches out. And if you look at some of the text of where people were writing with it, you could see you have that fine line and then into, into a broad. So if you're looking for variation, maybe the flex could be for you. Then journeying down a little bit here, uh, this is the JR. The JR was an old pen uh, from, from Estabrook. It was called the J back in the 1930s, 40s. Uh, we brought it back to life, has a similar shape, and we added all these great colors. You can see the JR in, in the pumpkin latte, the violet, the green. Um, so, I mean, Estabrook, even in, even in addition to the pens, we've now added some accessories. So we have journals, we have the little book holder, which you see there with the B, which is nice because it holds your journal open. So when you're writing, it just adds a nice uh, little personality to your page. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that ride with Estabrook and come on down to the Orlando Pen Show. We'd love to have you. My name is uh, John Lesher, and this is my wife, Cicely, and we are the Taylor Pen Company. So what we do is we primarily specialize in online uh, orders. Uh, anytime anybody wants to place an order and they want specific specifications to a pen, we can do that for them. 
Um, some of our other uh, things that we uh, that we like to make are our Asher pens. They are our faceted six-sided pen with a triple start. So you'll have three different positions for them to terminate in to. And then it's also six-sided on the ends as well. So it gives it a really nice gem-like sparkle shine with it as well. Um, so that's one thing that we really, really take pride in. Another is working with vintage materials like celluloid and then doing collaborations like with uh, Leonardo pens. And then some of our other ones that we like to do is our, our integrated ink windows. And that is, that is molded into the material itself, so there is no seams on it at all. And we're proud to say that we are one of the first ones to have done that in the handmade pen industry. And then we're also working with uh, honeycomb. We uh, get to use our own different types of uh, um, colors and with our own molds, be able to make a, a wide range of variety of color palettes. So that's pretty much what we love to do. We love to work with our, our customers and our clients. Uh, we do have a website, uh, taylorpencompany.com, and we're also on Instagram as uh, Taylor Pen Company. Hi, right, my name is Rich Paul. I am with River City Pen Company. I'm out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're here for the Orlando Pen Show. Um, I have a big variety of pens, different models, different sizes. Um, I have my um, newer nib holders I've been making. They, they'll hold the Kakamori nibs. They will hold your Takakaiwa nibs, Yobo and Bach number six, as well as a lot of your different calligraphy and dip nibs. Also here in the center, I also have my newer uh, Esplin model. It is my, my narrowest model. It comes standard with a stainless steel clip and a stainless cap finial that has a company logo on it. So again, we're down here at the Orlando Pen Show today, but you could also reach me at, through Instagram at River City Pen Company or on my website at rivercitypencompany.com. Hi, I'm John Lane with Coles of London. We are the U.S. distributors for Visconti and ST DuPont. And we are very happy to be at the first ever Orlando Pen Show uh, featuring some of our newer products. This is the Visconti Woodstock Collection. Um, limit, very limited editions, retail for $750. Um, these are some limited editions we did with Jonathan Brooks, who is a U.S. resin manufacturer. It's a Medici barrel, and it's called the Astral. Uh, with S.T. DuPont, our newest Line D Large is called the Gold Dust, and this is available now in both a fountain and a roller. And lastly, this is the new Skylight Homo Sapiens steel trim. Basically, holds about nine cartridges worth of ink. So we are The Right Stuff, LLC. We're based out of uh, the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Uh, we like to promote small business owners. We are big on stationery. We have um, a set here in the front that is actually uh, hand-drawn and crafted by a young girl in Germany. And she um, puts it together in a beautiful set, 25 sheets and 10 envelopes. And this just sells fantastic, beautiful paperwork. Um, this is a set that is uh, hand drawn and put together by a couple out of the UK called 210 Studios. Comes with four sheets and four envelopes. It's also 170 gram weight paper for fountain pen lovers. Um, the cats are our most popular sellers. Everybody loves the cats. Um, also, we promote uh, Aaron Condren um, notebooks for fountain pen lovers. It's 80 gram weight paper. And then these are pen holders you can strap to your notebooks. And this is from an artist group out of Utah 
called Dinic. A bunch of artists put together a little company to promote other artists' work. So we like to promote small business. So we're putting together small business owners' products to try to sell at these pin stores, mostly accessories. But anyway, so far so good. We've sold out of quite a few things at the DC pin show, so people love it.